Well, welcome to this address from a very special graduate from the Cadence School of Engineering. My name is Drew Bell. I'm the of the School of Engineering here at KU. And this marks our third distinguished engineering lecture. And today I'd like to extend a heartfelt welcome to our speaker for taking the time to be here with us as he also prepares for his duty as uh, the Grand Marshal of tomorrow's homecoming parade. Actually, that's on Saturday. <coughs> I also want to take a moment to recognize some of our distinguished guests that are in attendance today. We have several of our engineering advisory board members. Uh, thank you all for coming out uh, and being with us uh, today. After graduating from KU in 1963 with a mechanical engineering degree, Bob Eaton spent nearly 30 years with General Motors. In 1992, he moved to Chrysler Corporation, eventually serving as chairman and CEO. In 1998, Eaton was named chairman of the newly formed Daimler Chrysler after Chrysler merged with Daimler Benz, and he retired from that position in 2000. His career in the auto industry had humble yet auspicious beginnings in our Kansas City. At age of 11, he shelled out $10 for a 1933 Chevrolet. He then spent $15 to make it run. So we repeat that, uh, $25 and a little elbow grease for a working car. Clearly his passion and ingenuity were evident from the early start of his career. Of course, Mr. Eaton would eventually be at the center of that $76 billion merger between Chrysler and Daimler Benz in 1998. Again, it just goes to show that a degree from Katie School of Engineering, and again, a little elbow grease, can truly open doors to amazing careers. In addition to his lengthy and successful time in the automotive industry, Bob has been incredibly generous towards his alma mater. This is evident with the time he's given to the School of Engineering over the year, including a 15-year stint on the School of Engineering Advisory Board. And of course, the building we're in today bears his name and was made possible in large part by the generous uh, donation he made to the building. The Kansas <clears throat> Alumni Association awarded him the Distinguished Service Citation in 1994 and the School of Engineering honored him with our Distinguished Engineering Service Award in 1995. It is a great honor to have him here today for him to share his insights with us and to answer your questions. It's my hope that we'll all learn from his experiences and apply those to our own endeavors. Please join me in welcoming one of our most distinguished graduates in the namesake of this building, Bobby. I wanted to be, by the time I was at least 15, 
I want to be an engineer. And I want to be a mechanical engineer. And I wanted to work for an automobile company. And I came to JU and uh, didn't get the best grades. As a matter of fact, after the first semester, I was on my way. Buckled down, finally graduated with very good grades, particularly the latter part of my career. Uh, but it was that passion that got me to KU, and also, more importantly, got me through it. When I got out of college, I only had one interview, and that's because I knew what I wanted to do. I interviewed General Motors right here in Marvin Hall, and uh, fortunately they offered me a job. I went to Detroit, went into a training program, something that I would suggest every one of you do if you had the opportunity. This had to be a program where you rotated around in all aspects of engineering within the General Motors organization. And as a result, at the end of two years, I really understood technical part of that entire company, and a big portion of the manufacturing of the company. I spent six months on a drawing board, six months in a test lab, excuse me, three months in a test lab, three months in a proving grounds, three months in an engine manufacturing plant, three months in an assembly plant, three months in a design engineer's office, working with him out on, on new designs, etc. And then uh, three months uh, in an act here in Axel Plant and so forth. Got out of there and went into Chevrolet R&D. And uh, was there a few years uh, doing various kinds of things. Did some research, and some ultimately some research in car handling, and then some demonstrating, uh, demonstration driving that was often used in litigation. Then became a design engineer charge of front suspension and steering. Went from there to planning. Uh, got involved in the rotary engine very deep back when we really thought that technology had a chance. And then from there into advanced engineering. And in other words, I moved around quite a lot. And I think, again, that's a very good thing for people to do. It gives you a broad understanding of how the entire business works. But there was, wasn't any place along the line that I wasn't happy. So you know, you, it's not important that you do anything more than what your passion is. And that has to be in research, has to be in design, testing, sales, or even going from an engineering degree to some other, some other discipline. I'm a firm believer that the engineering education that teaches us problem solving, et cetera, is by far the best background you can have for absolutely anything out there. Uh, as you know, a lot of people, probably some of you, are going into, into medicine. Uh, hopefully, none of you are going in, going to be an attorney. We've got way too many attorneys. <laughs> we need about, I think we need about a third of the amount of attorneys we got in this country, about three times the number of engineers. So hopefully, you'll we'll, we'll stick generally in that way. But, but medicine's a good, a good place to go. As you know, there's a lot of a lot of areas of medicine where your engineering background uh, can be can be very beneficial. So it's not, you know, I think whatever your passion is is what you want to stay with. I just was always ready to take another challenge, and fortunately I had I had the opportunities to do that. I never set a career goal either. I just sort of tried to work hard. Uh, and I worked hard because I liked it. I wasn't, wasn't driving myself. And that's again where passion comes in. If you really enjoy what you're doing, you're going to be good at it. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're not going to be good at it. To make a long story short, I became a, a vice president of GM in 1982 and in charge of advanced engineering and manufacturing. In 86, I became a group vice president in charge of research advanced engineering, manufacturing, design, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then in 88 was really the first P&L, profit and loss job I had. I was uh, president of General Motors of Europe, had Opel, 
box all of this in Saab. Uh, manufacturing in 13 countries, I think, and for sales in about 26. And it was really that that all the jobs that I had up to that point, and I skipped over a lot of them, you know, prepared to well for that. I was couldn't have been happier. I uh, didn't expect to ever leave GM. And I got a knock on the door to, if I'd come to Chrysler, uh, I could replace Lee Iacocca and uh, couldn't turn that one down. So I went to Chrysler. Because of the 82, 81, 82 problems that Chrysler had, they had sold off all their international operations. And so while we were the number one most profitable car company in the entire world in the 90s there, in the US, we didn't really have an overseas base. And we could see with what was coming from Korea, already was coming at that point from Japan, but Korea, and believe me, China is right behind them. And with labor rates at about $40 an hour, more most of those people were paying, we simply couldn't survive. And so we started looking, I, along with the board of directors and the management of Chrysler, started looking for someone that we could combine with. We actually had plenty of cash, and we were looking to buy somebody. But we couldn't find anybody that felt like a match. So we finally ended up with, with the Mercedes Benz. Obviously, that didn't work out the way we had hoped. Uh, but I had been predicting for some time that there was going to be bankruptcy in the US market, and we were trying to avoid it by tying up with Mercedes. Obviously, ultimately, it wasn't avoided, and GM and Chrysler went into bankruptcy. And uh, obviously, they have major challenges ahead of them, no question about it. So that's kind of my background, and, and give you enough, hopefully, to generate some questions from your minds, things you'd like to talk about. As I said, there are no bad questions. Uh, I don't beat my wife. Other than that, you can ask anything. <laughs> we'll try, and we'll try to uh, we'll try to answer it truthfully. We have a microphone for anybody who might ask the first question. Uh, what's your dream car? I mean, obviously you've been through Chrysler and Chevy, I'm just curious. <laughs> well, you know, I, as you might expect, I, I've had a lot of cars, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm down to only about five or six or seven now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I, have, I have had a, uh, I've had, let's see, I've had a Corvette uh, right out of college. I bought a, a, com a company used car program, I bought a 3,000 mile 63 flip of the coupe for the Corvette. Uh, I, uh, I wish I still had that vehicle, by the way. <laughs> I've, had, uh, I've had a couple of uh, uh, bikers, uh, one of them serial number one, serial number one Prowler, uh, a McLaren, uh, I've got a Ferrari, uh, F430 Spider right now. <laughs> Uh, I've driven, up until, up until 10 years ago, I could say I've driven every car in the world. Yeah, I can't say that. But uh, there's a lot of good things out there. A lot of my friends like older cars. I'm always looking for the next new technology. The, and so I frankly have never had any particular interest in those guys. Uh, I suppose. Uh, I didn't really care for the McLaren SLR. You know what that car is, the doors come forward. Believe it or not, I like a Ferrari a lot better than it's a lot less than half the price. The new Mercedes go and look pretty good. Uh, I've had an opportunity to drive it, but I had not yet. So if you stay out some of the really, really exotic stuff, uh, I guess if I were going to buy a, a car in that price range, 